Through the power of imagination, I can do this! <laughs> Hey, Green Machine Comics, friends and fans of fun. We got a friend here uh, right now. This is my friend, Anthony. Anthony. And uh, how much do you come here? Every week. <laughs> every week? Yeah. Probably like every other day, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you like it here? You like our store? Yeah. Who's your favorite superhero? Yeah. Oh, Superman? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Who do you think my favorite is? You don't know? Batman. Yeah, Batman. <laughs> well, yeah, Red Hood. Yeah. And, uh... Green Lantern, yeah, yeah. So you come here, like all the time. Oh you you like family here. Family. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, I, I had to go to the back, one day, and Anthony, was like watching, the TV back here. Some people walked in. Do you do you remember? Yeah. You remember? They walked in and they went to the back back here. And so I was looking on the camera, and, and Anthony's like, like watching the TV, watching the TV, watching the TV. And then finally he's like, so, and you, 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 uh, what, you slid your, your, uh, what is it, wheel? Yeah, wheelchair, wheelchair. And he backed up to like watch them to make sure they were not stealing. <laughs> that was nice, man, looking out for, for our store. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you. So we figured we figured we bring you on on camera this one time, let you talk. Yeah? Nice. So um we have free comic day. Is it comic? That's the sign? I never knew that. Comic, huh? Okay, so we have free comic day and that is uh on Saturday. Yeah, so you're going to be here? Okay, okay. So, free comic day Saturday. So, this is Anthony, and we'll get to our videos in one minute, or reviews in one minute. So, yay, okay. Okay, so, Green Machine Comics, friends and fans, fun. God, I love saying that. I love it. All right. Um, we've got a lot of comics to review this week, but more importantly, we've got um, free comic book day on Saturday, and then starting tomorrow, while supplies last, we're going to have a free 25-cent comic that is a celebration of DC Comics' uh, Year of the Villain, mm -hmm. which starts now, because we've got the comic. And so this is 25 cents. This gets you a 36-page comic, so it's it's a full comic for a quarter. I think I, Actually, I think it's 27 after tax. Um, but so this is the most dangerous summer event, and it starts here. And uh, it, it really is dangerous. So, uh, we've got a lot of people plotting in this whole thing. Obviously, Bane's plotting because Bane's always plotting. And they show the Batman who laughs for exactly, I think, one page. And you know he's plotting. I mean, he's the Batman who laughs. Um, Perpetua, who is basically the mother of all creation in the DC Universe, uh, who has been revived. And she believes in doom, not justice. And so she's, yeah, dealing with stuff, dealing with Lex, who is... Uh, Pretty much uh, her, I guess, champion, I guess is a good way to put it. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Legion of Doom is plotting, and somebody named Leviathan has come back, and nobody knows who this is. But it, he looks like a cross between Cobra Commander and Destro. So I'm, I'm rather a big fan and want to see where that's going. But uh, this is a really good read. For 25 cents, this is a great comic. You really can't go wrong. On top of that, uh, the second artist, which uh, I, I'm not sure who it is, but the whole bat... Bad Girl and Green Arrow arc. The artist for that is amazing. Like it reminded me of like the Punisher art. It is um, Alex Maliev. So Alex Maliev, good job, man. That that looked amazing. Um, yeah. So Year of the Villain. We will have these on sale for twenty five cents tomorrow. Come through. Um, next is Green Lantern, and you know I didn't like 
the story arc very much. It wasn't the arc so much. Like, I like Grant Morrison. I didn't like the art, like, at all. It reminded me way too much of, like, our crumb. I, I, I don't know. I just, it didn't feel like comic art to me. And I know, I know that's, like, some people don't agree with that assessment, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. So the art has not changed too much. I have to say the art is still pretty similar uh, to how it was when it started. However, there's some good stuff in this. Uh, what happens is um, we find out that Hal Jordan has been trapped inside of his ring. And, you know, there's a sentient AI and there's like a, a, a space wizard, I guess, that was trapped there by uh, the, the uh, Guardians. And so, you know, Hal's got to deal with that while the ring is losing power. And he's got to figure out a way out of his ring. And I got to tell you, I know it's a spoiler, but Hal Jordan kisses his ring at the end of this book, and it's great. It's magical. Giant spoiler, I know. But if you want to see Hal Jordan make out with his ring, which I, I didn't know I wanted to see that, but apparently I wanted to see that because that was kind of like, funny. <laughs> I mean, it is, it, is a, it is a full frontal kiss on his ring. <laughs> he, yeah, he's clearly in love with his ring. I don't know. I'm not one to judge, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was a, a pretty good read. I had a good time with this book. I I know I've kind of bashed the new Green Lantern run, which is weird as a giant Green Lantern fanboy. I have not had the best time with it, and yet this was a pretty good showing. I was kind of happy about this, so go pick it up. It's Green Lantern number seven. So yeah, back on the right path. Next is Champions, and if you can't tell from this cover, Cyclops is in play, and wow. Wow, there is a lot to unpack here. So this is the War of the Realms. The War of the Realms gets kicked off. Uh, we know Miles has separated from the team because of the events of him revealing that he revived some of them using Mephisto to do it. Uh, which is not... That, that doesn't ever work out for anyone. Um, except Ghost Riders, I guess. Sort of. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's that. And then Cyclops comes into play. And oh my god, all of a sudden something happens. And he starts screaming about his champions and going crazy. Now, if you don't remember, Cyclops at one point had been Slim Summers, who was a member of the champions. He was the leader of the champions, actually, for a while there. And then what happened was uh, he explains that the timelines merged. And then he, his uh, former psyche merged, I think is how it worked. So he got his psyche back, and it was like all at once. Like he starts screaming, barking orders, leading the team, and I was like, "What is going on here?" So it's explained, and it's kind of a cool read. It's it's something to see. So if you like the old champion stuff with uh, with the, the former Cyclops, the young Cyclops, I guess you could say, uh, this this is something to see. And and even as someone who wasn't a huge Champions fan uh, in the past, uh, I had a pretty good time with this book. So go pick it up. Next is a book I had a wonderful and amazing time with uh, and, and wasn't sure about it because there's all type A personalities put together for this team. But that is the Savage Avengers. Now, stop me if you've heard this one, okay? Conan is ha hanging out in some savage place. This time the Savage Lands because they brought him to the Marvel reality. Okay. That's the events of Avengers No Road Home. Right, right. And so he's hanging out there and suddenly... A cult shows up and tries to do what? Summon? Summon? Okay. Uh, horned beast or a blood god? A blood god! Hey! <laughs> so a cult's trying to summon a blood god. Which happens all the time with Conan. All the time. So they're trying to summon a blood god in the Savage Lands. They're like gathering people up to do it. Uh, they need the best humans, the best humankind has to offer to offer as a blood sacrifice in this giant pool of blood. So so they're killing like composers and geniuses and stuff like that, uh, which is a terrible, terrible thing to do. But they're trying to tempt, you know, uh, the, the best fighters of the world to come there. And that doesn't seem like a good idea. No. No. I'm looking at that front cover. No. no. You don't want to tempt any of these people <laughs> to come hang out with you and piss them off. And... and let me just say, I, I already sort of spoiled one thing about, you know, the Green Lantern making out with his ring, which I thought was the funniest thing ever. Um, I'm not going to spoil the end of this, but I just got to say that of all the things you should never do to the Punisher, don't do what these idiots did. Because this, this is the same as kicking John Wick's dog. Like, you just, 
you shouldn't do it. Like I, I had to, I got to the last page and I had to put this down for a minute and go like, whoa, whoa, we are going to see some death on some levels we might not have ever seen before with the Punisher. Yeah. So, mm, go check out Savage Avengers just, just for the end alone. Like I, I mean, it's nice to see these characters play well together. I had a good time watching Conan and Wolverine play off each other. My God, those people are really happy about jewelry or something. I guess so. So anyways, um, uh, that was really fun to see, but more importantly, uh, the final page where you see how not to piss off Punisher is great. Okay. It is great. Um, next is a book that I think is going to be my pick of the week. Maybe my pick of the month. Whoa. Maybe my okay. pick of the month, and that's Batman. Batman right. number 70. Now, we've had, I think, like 10 books of the Nightmare, Nightmare stuff. stuff. Yeah. And they split it up in the middle with the price, so it seemed like extra long. And if you don't know the Nightmares books, it was determined that Batman was strapped to a machine by his father, Thomas Wayne and Bane, and that Batman was being doused with chemicals, fear-toxic chemicals, to just give him endless nightmares. And they were these trippy, surreal books, books that had poetry and books that had, like, just some well-used characters in Batman and beautiful artwork. And normally I don't like the whole, it was all a dream type stuff, but these were so well written. Like I would buy a trade full of just nightmares and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get that opportunity. <laughs> but, um, so that was nice and that was great. And it was building, it was a long time coming though, but it was building to the point where we knew he was going to break off out of this machine. There was no one to rescue him. It was established pretty early on. Nobody knew where he was. He was trapped and he was going to have to rescue himself. And so that's what happens in this book. He, he rescues himself, and then he has to fight his way out of Arkham Asylum. And, you know, I got to tell you, if you've been dousing Batman with chemicals and pissing him off, showing him endless nightmares for I don't know how many days on end, and then he's got to rescue himself, he's a little raw. Just a little raw. And, and he's going to deal with the worst criminals that Gotham has to offer that are hanging out in Arkham Asylum. They're all in Bane's pockets. And, uh, well, that, that gets a little bloody and brutal. And it was great. Oh, God, it was great. It was everything I wanted in this arc uh, summed up into this book right here. And what a great ending to that. So I can't wait for the next Batman book because uh, they're, they're setting some stages and uh, are setting the stage. Uh, Batman is, I, I'm sure you can imagine at this point, he's a little more than kind of pissed at Bane. A little upset. A little upset. It might get violent. I don't know. They might just sit down and discuss their differences over coffee. Probably not. It's like gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, next we're going to talk about is the Dreaming. And this is the Neil Gaiman Sandman Universe stuff. Uh, if you don't know, in this part of the Dreaming, the Dreaming is another realm that has all these... I don't know. Do we call them gods? They're sort of uh, embodiments of... Uh, things of nature everything from like death to like delirium to and they all their names sort of start with d and dreaming uh has his own realm sort of where a lot of these creatures hang out and uh his name is daniel and he's been missing and they've needed to find him because if they don't find him uh they can't repair the dreaming and the dreaming is falling apart but uh now we've got a sentient ai bug creature that is sort of Fixing things? Yeah, that's weird, right? Uh -huh. So a sentient AI bug creature has taken over the Dreaming. And uh, Dana, uh, who I think is Delirium, because she can pass through other realms, I think is... I can't remember who she is exactly. No, no, no. But her and uh, somebody else, the Crow, who is also the Pumpkinhead dude, I can't remember his name. I'm sorry, it's been a while. Um, they're trying to find Daniel, and they track him to a fairy realm, and... Well, let's just say all hell breaks loose, and it's very Neil Gaiman. It's very Neil Gaiman. Things play out a certain way, and then there's a twist, a giant twist, and I can't spoil it, but it was a great, great read. And as somebody who hadn't been following the Dreaming closely, I jumped in on book nine. I think the last one I read was like three or four. Uh, this was not terribly confusing, as weird as, as it sounded. So I think it's almost a good jumping off point. It's a really good comic, too. Um, and uh, the art, I've, I've loved all the art that they've showed so far from all these Sandman books. So you really can't go wrong. So go pick up the Dreaming number nine. It's great. Uh, next is Uncanny X-Men. And this is the Rosenberg book. And we talked about how the Uncanny X-Men, the War of the Realms, yeah. felt really rushed and forced. Yes. And 
by the same to uh, by uh, not the same token, uh, the flip side is the Uncanny X Men stuff does not feel rushed and forced. So they're dealing with a funeral, a funeral involving um, what's her name, the werewolf. Uh, oh God, it's gonna drive me nuts. Um, what is her name? Oh my God, I'm so Ron, 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 R A H N E, Ron. Ron, or Rain, maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong, I don't know. But uh, it's her dealing with her issues, and then Wolverine's got to get to the bottom of it. It turns out she was sort of beaten to death by some crappy humans who didn't like mutants, and it's a little shocking. It feels very... Early X-Men stuff? Yeah, so I, I would have to say that if, if you think seeing a woman being beaten to death, or at least sort of part of that... Uh, is going to bother you, this, you sh might want to skip this. But they're dealing with it, and Wolverine deals with it in a very Wolverine way. You know, he, he doesn't really go to the funeral. He goes to figure out what happened and kicks some ass. And I like that. And it sort of puts him on a warpath with uh, Cyclops, because Cyclops wanted everyone at the funeral to show in solidarity. So that's, that's good. They're still playing this right. Rosenberg writes this right. And Wolverine and Cyclops should always be at odds with each other until it's fighting time, and then they're on the same side. So uh, I, I, it's just a really good showing from the Uncanny X-Men stuff. Uh, it, it's, it's like night and day between this and, and last year's stuff that was coming out, which I was not a fan of. So, uh, yeah, keep, go out and get Uncanny X-Men unless, unless seeing something pretty traumatic like that is going to bother you. And then maybe steer clear till next month. Oh, my God, the microphone has magically moved to a new position. Uh, let's see. The next book on our list is Rocco's Modern Life. I'm sorry. Rocco's Modern Afterlife, and this involves Rocco and a zombie apocalypse. Because why not? Everyone gets a zombie apocalypse once in a while. Yay. We've proven that it could happen twice this week. <laughs> and that starts with Rocco's Modern Afterlife. And, well, it's all of the Rocco's characters dealing with the zombie apocalypse. And on top of that, uh, they fight survivors, which is the other Rocco's characters that are sort of fighting with them. And so uh, someone's done their homework on Zombie Apocalypse, and they know that, you know, that the monsters are kind of scary, but the real fear comes when the survivors are attacking you, you know? Ah, yeah. Like, you might have some real issues then. So uh, someone's done their homework. It was actually a pretty good read. And as someone who was, I was a fan of Rocco's Modern Life growing up, uh, I like this cartoon show. Uh, it felt like a cartoon version, a more gritty Rocco's Modern Life. But it was pretty good. Uh, like Scooby-Doo Apocalypse style, or a little bit more? Uh, no, it was a little more cuddly and friendly than, than that Scooby-Doo Apocalypse. That, that, that stuff got dark at times. <laughs> but uh, it was a good read. If you like Rocco's Modern Life, or you feel like you want a Nickelodeon book, or you want a kid's a sort of kid-feeling take on the Apocalypse, uh, this one's pretty good. I don't think there's anything too uh, graphic in this, so I think you're okay with buying this for your kids. Yeah, I think I just want to see like some of my childhood friends go up against some zombies. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Uh, next is another really, really good book from this week. Um, there's a lot to unpack. So if you haven't been following the Justice League, uh, I'm not entirely sure how to break this down for you, but I'm going to try. So the source wall broke. Um, the heroes were sort of involved in the source wall breaking. And what we know is that the universe is flying towards something, towards judgment. It's never been going that way before. Now... It can go two ways. It can go doom or justice. Um, one of the first gods that birthed the universe is called Perpetua. She wants the world to fall to doom. Uh, meanwhile, Lex wants it to doom because he had some kind of premonition that involved getting in the key. The key came from the totality. God, there is a lot to unpack here. Um, meanwhile, the heroes have fallen into the sixth dimension to try and find a way to fight uh, what's going on. The sixth dimension looks like a utopia. Um, they come to find out that one of the people that tricked them into the sixth dimension uh, did it with a purpose. He wants to rewrite the utopia version of the sixth dimension onto the current universe so that their world is saved when they get to judgment. Because the utopian one is the perfect one. Uh, that rewriting will cost the lives of everyone in the current universe. Um, and on top of that... The way they're doing it is Mixelplix, who is a sixth dimension um, being, 
Uh, and Batmite, well, both of them were bound to Superman and Batman. Mixoplex is currently being controlled by Doom, and he is uh, just basically unwriting their universe. And it's kind of cool to see, because when he does it, um, it actually shows the penciling and the ink fading from the world, which is a very cool thing to do in a comic. I like that little fourth wall type stuff. Um, so, if you aren't confused, I'd be really surprised by this point, because this... There's a lot of depth to this story that's going on right now. Uh, there's a lot to unpack. That doesn't mean you won't have a good time with this. I've been having the best time with Justice League. And this book is no different. Uh, this one, it sort of sets the stage where would you sacrifice your whole universe to guarantee that this other version of the universe that is written on top of it will survive? So, would you sacrifice all these people? And... and they, they're basically going to be rewritten into these older lives where the universe is perfect, but would you sacrifice them to guarantee a win? Whoa, almost knocked Whoa. over his head. To guarantee a win. Would you do it? That's a tough call. That's a tough call. That, uh, like, would you save, like, one baby on a track? Or, like, yeah, people? yeah. So here's the thing. Yeah. All of the Justice League uh, is not on board with this. All of them is like, no, that's cruel. I would never do that. Uh, except for one person. Who do you think is the one person that says, like, hmm... I need to think this through. Batman. Yeah! <laughs> of course it's Batman! Justice. Yeah, yeah. So, that's what's going on with Justice League. It's a lot to unpack, but uh, really, if you aren't reading it, I gotta tell you, I think you're missing one of the best storylines going on in comics these days. And granted, Snyder writes wild stuff. There's a lot of weird, wild storylines he does, but this one's really, really good right now, so go check it out. Um... Next is another book that sort of caught me by surprise. It's DC and IDW's uh, mashup of uh, Batman TMNT number three. Um, <laughs> you should know, if you're planning on reading this, I might spoil the first book a little bit. I try not to spoil these books, but it's hard to talk about the first book without talking about the plot. So here goes. Oh, by the way, there's an Eastman variant that is really, really good. And it is Eastman. I saw his okay. signature. It looks great. Um, but, uh, okay, so to unpack this... The beginning of this has Batman and the Ninja Turtles fighting the Smile Gang, which involves a Shredder, uh, a Shredder Joker mashup. Okay. Yeah, and on top of that, each of the Ninja Turtles looks like a Robin. There is Raph. Raph, I gotta show Raph because it's my favorite. Raph, wouldn't you know it, is Jason Todd as Red Hood, <laughs> and it's great. Uh, yeah. Then we've got, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then we've got um. Donatello is um, um, Tim Drake. Damian Wayne is Michelangelo. And then good old Grayson is Leonardo. So it's so good. It's such a good showing. But here's the thing. So these worlds are mashed up. And to me, I, I hate to say it, I, re I referenced another Marvel event I didn't like where things got mashed up and it was gimmicky. This doesn't feel so much. Granted, I'm a DC fanboy and a Ninja Turtles fanboy. So you can take my point of view on this with a grain of salt, but it's good. And the best part of all, the original series TMNT characters, the OG inked black and white TMNT characters pop up at the end of this comic and announce that things are messed up and you've all been tricked and this is not the way the world should be. Oh. And it's so chilling to see these characters in play. So, and, and they drew them just like they were. The old black and white one. Oh, God, it's so good. So, um, I'm going to say this is a must-buy this week if you can get a hold of it. I don't know how many copies we're going to have. So, come pick it up. It was a great read, and I want to see more of it. On top of that, I think the art um, came from the He-Man he Injustice stuff. Oh, okay. So, it's really good art. I think it is the same artist. It looks similar. Um, so, go check it out. Next is... One dollar debut. It's Ninja uh, Ninja K. Ninja. I I don't know if it's Ninjak or nin Ninja K. Everyone I've talked to said Ninjak. I've always <laughs> pronounced it Ninjak, but <coughs> technically there was a Ninja A, a Ninja B, Ninja oh. <laughs> Ninja C, Ninjak One. Oh, Ninjak One. Ninja D, nin Ninjab. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, um. There is a, uh, it's, it's basically Ninja K's first issue, 
And you can come pick this up for a dollar. I'm not entirely sure why they're doing this. Isn't there a, nin a Ninjak TV show coming? I think there oh, is. There is something going on with the Valiant universe. I know that they've been talking about doing a Bloodshot uh, movie with Vin Diesel. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they were talking about doing an expansion on the universe. Huh. Big okay. I can't remember. That's it. I can't remember. They're doing something with Valiant. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but nonetheless, Ninjak or Ninja K, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, this is a pretty good showing. I mean, it's his first comic. Uh, I know pe there are a lot of people that are really loyal to the Valiant universe. So you know what you're getting if you're a Valiant fan. If you're not a Valiant fan, for $1, you can jump in on this lovely universe of superheroes and ninjas. <clears throat> a buck. Can't go wrong. Next is uh, DC Comics Deceased. <coughs> I'm going to tell you, if you don't want any spoilers on this book, go ahead and skip ahead about three minutes, maybe four minutes. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be talking on this. But this is a really, really good showing, and it's the first book, so we got to talk about the plot a little bit. <clears throat> so there are zombies in the DC Universe, and that could be, I don't know, very generic. You could do it very generic and cheesy and not throw a DC spin on it, but they totally threw a DC spin on it that's great. Um... What do you know about Doomsday? Not Doomsday. What am I saying? Darkseid. 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 I got my D here. Oh, <laughs> villain's confused. I get confused about Darkseid. Dark <laughs> Not Doomsday. Darkseid. What do you know about Darkseid? Uh, he's basically the big baddie in the uh, DC universe. But what's he always hunting? Oh, he's always hunting the, uh, the uh, equation. The uh, anti-life equation. The anti-life equation. He's always hunting the anti-life equation. If you don't know... The anti-life equation is the opposite of the life equation. The anti-life equation, I think the life equation is about free will, and the anti-life equation is about taking free will and how to control sentient beings and make them do your bidding. And Darkseid is always after this because he feels that war is sort of messy and chaotic, and he thinks that there's a better way to conquer, and that's through the anti-life equation. And so he's always been hunting this. Actually, he's found it before. But he's always been hunting. I think he's found it before. Yeah, I remember he's found yeah. it before. Uh, anyway, so he's always been hunting it. This takes place after an event when he, when Apocalypse was sort of turned away from their invasion on Earth. You should know what that event is. Um, however, he gets the anti-life equation this time, and it's get this, corrupt. Oh. He got a corrupt version of the anti-life equation, which leads to people becoming. The Undead, oh. yes. Oh, wow. And I think that's a really, really dope take on this. What a great way to open this series uh, with a corrupt version of the Anti-Life Equation. And I can't wait to see how that plays out. More importantly, are they going to show the corrupt equation? I, I, I remember when they showed the... Everyone was like, what exactly is the Anti-Life Equation? And then one day they came out with it on the cover and just like blasted the whole equation on the cover. And I was like, oh... Well, they just gave it away. <laughs> it was just like, here you go. Now you know it, you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> say hello to death. <laughs> yeah, say hello to being controlled from dark side. Uh, okay, um, so I, I want to know what the corrupt uh, anti-life equation is. They didn't show it in this, really. Um, it was really cool to see how that played out. Uh, that's a good twist on uh, an old sort of zombie tropey type thing. And I can't wait to see this event. It's it, it looks really good. It looks great, to be honest with you. Yeah, and bet I went deep on that one, dude. <laughs> best of all, like because it's a techno virus, you gotta avoid both oh. being bit and the internet. Ah, oh, I'd be dead. I'd be dead in like a matter of minutes. I'd be, they'd be like the the news the news broadcast would be like, don't go check anything. Turn everything off. Don't even power on your phone to check the internet. Or you're gonna get infected, and I'd be like, I wonder what's going on on Facebook. Yeah. Memes. <laughs> <laughs> GG. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Next, we're gonna talk about Deathstroke and the Terminus agenda. And, well, it's something. Oh. I, I, I mean, it's not bad. I just, I'm not sure how to talk about this without spoiling it. Oh, okay. And, and it's it's near the end of the event, so I can't spoil it. I'm just not sure how to talk about it. So what we can talk about is that Damian Wayne and uh, Red Arrow had a not not Red Arrow they got not Arsenal, yeah, not Arsenal. Like the, the the new Red Arrow 
had a prison under their headquarters for uh, Teen Titans. And that prison had an agenda called the Terminus Agenda, which was a, uh, well, you find out what it is in this issue, so I can't spoil it for you. On top of that, I can't spoil the ending. It was uh, a little shocking. But if you've been reading the event, you sort of know what's coming. Uh, I just didn't expect it to be at that point. So it was a pretty good read. Um, I do think that if you're a Deathstroke fan, even a slight Deathstroke fan, you should probably go pick this up. This might be important to his character. Uh, it's pretty important to what's going on with the Teen Titans right now. Go pick it up. If you like any of those things, if you like the Teen Titans and Deathstroke, go grab this right away. Uh, anyone else, don't jump in on this book. It's the end of the event. It would be a little confusing for you. I think you should wait um, till the next book. Painful not spoiling, man. <laughs> it was really hard to not spoil that. But it's the wrapping up of an event. I have no problems talking about a book if it's the beginning. But the wrap up, I feel bad. Uh, next is Major X. And I'm not sure if I really want to spoil this for you or not. But I really just am not into this story at all. Uh, Maybe it's less of a story and more of like, here's the rap sheet, you know? Like it feels like guy. fan fiction. Yeah. It's it's a bad thing to say. I know it's popular right now. That's the thing. Everybody's buying it up because they're like, Liefeld made a new character. Uh, granted, Liefeld made Deadpool. Deadpool's great. Um, I don't like Liefeld's art, and the way he writes is very tropey at best. He, he gave away who Major X was in the first issue. That... Was he should have held that hand for a little while longer? Uh, he introduced a world that is very cheesy and filled with, with X acronyms and X. Everything starts with an X in this world. Maybe sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> it's ah, I don't care about the storyline. I'm not having the best time with this event. I don't know if you are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I personally feel that Liefeld made a deal with the devil to get as popular as he is, and I'm not sure. I think it's going to come out one day. He's going to have a Faustian fight with the devil when he decides not to give up his soul. Uh, yeah. So anyways, um, mm, mm, mm. I, if you are a Deadpool fan, uh, there is a Deadpool character, inspired character in this story that's kind of cool. Uh, if you are a Liefeld fan, you know who you are. You're probably already reading Major X. If you're anyone else like me, you probably don't like this story. Granted, I'm more of a DC fanboy. I don't ever hide that. I'm just not having the best time with this story. Okay. God, that that wrap-up made my eye twitch, too. <laughs> I feel so bad. Um, okay. I, I don't like criticizing too hard on books. Granted, I, I was brutal to Hulk for reading last week because that book sucked. <laughs> but, okay. Next is Harley Quinn. Um, had a good time with this book. It's really fun. Really fun. If you like Harley's writing, you you know uh, it's it's Humphreys. You know how he writes. He writes fun stuff. Um, pretty much this. Harley decided to borrow someone's D and D game to play or buy someone's D and D game. Uh, it was a old little old woman with glowing red eyes. Oh. Not the best purchase in retrospect. You don't buy things from people that have glowing red eyes. That never works out for anyone. Oh no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. She gets Jumanji. Yeah. You know what happens. She gets Jumanji. She is in a D and D universe, and every one of the characters is Batman family related, with a D and D spin on it, and it's fun. It's really fun. I had a great time with this. I want to see more. By the way, Catwoman is so bored and angry that there is a D and D game going at the beginning of this book. It's funny. It's <laughs> just so good. So, uh, yeah, Harley this week I think is a pretty fun read for anyone. And it's the beginning of a new arc, so go jump in on it. It's, it, it's a good time to do it. Our next book is Cold Blood Samurai. Uh, if you haven't heard of this book, I wouldn't be too surprised. I hadn't heard of it either. But I picked it up on name alone because uh, I like samurai stuff. And uh, I, I sort of looked into this, and it looks very Usagi Ojimbo inspired. Yep. So <clears throat> it is about a samurai that is a, I think he's a gecko or a lizard. He's a lizard. lizard. He's yeah. a lizard. And he is fighting uh, another clan of crabs. The crabs. And the crabs are pretty much like, um, uh, I guess, evil lords and stuff like that. So he gets into like a, a fight with them. It was cool to see. And then there's more evilness going on in this world. And, you know, the samurai is just sort of wandering. He's, he's you know, he's like a ronin. 
but they haven't said he's a Ronin. He just says samurai. But it's pretty good. It it feels like I guess you could say generic Usagi, which is not the nicest branding. I mean, they they're sort of tr I I want to believe they're trying to do their own thing, but it does feel very inspired by Usagi. Um, so if you're excitedly waiting for the new Usagi book to, to drop, which is soon, then you shouldn't be too disappointed with this. Uh, if you're somebody who likes anthropomorphic animals, you shouldn't be too disappointed with this. This is a pretty good read. Um, I had a good time with it, and it, it's from Action Lab. And I don't generally like Action Lab books. I, I have to be honest. Had a pretty good time with this. Oh, oh they do Princeless. Oh. So Princeless is not bad. Princess is not bad, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Haven't liked all of the action lab books. I gotta say, I'm trying to think of what else there is. Anyways, okay, uh, I'll leave that thinking to when I'm off camera. Next is War of the Realms Strike Force, uh, the Dark Elf Realm. The, these are the people that are going to break up and seize control and break up the uh, Black Bifrost so that they can stop invading Earth. And uh, the team they put together is pretty comical. Team doesn't work good with others. <laughs> team does not work good with others. Um, so this is, uh, the Punisher, Ghost Rider, Blade, and She-Hulk. Although I guess we're just calling her Hulk these days, right? Hulk. And, uh, and Freya. And this book was great. It was great. It was so darn funny. Um, I, I don't want to spoil all the one-liners, but I did explain some of them to Yogi, and you laughed out loud just hearing yes. my explanation. Yes. So it was pretty funny to see this team work together the way they did. See how it played out. It was funny. I laughed pretty hard. Uh, I I thought these were just one shots, but it looks like there's gonna be more to this. Um, I'm not entire. Follow Ferio's fight in War of the Realms four. Okay, so they're continuing it on in mainline. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, so yeah, this is a good read. If you're uh, if you've been following the War of the Realms stuff, I would say I don't think this is a must read. I think you can get by without reading this. However, it was a fun read. You should go out and snatch this one up. Next is, well, Deadpool. Oh, hey. Now, Deadpool has been fighting a character called Goodnight. The stupidest name ever, Goodnight Moon. And he has a mace because he knocks people out. Goodnight. Oh. I guess. Like with a K? Or no, oh. no. But I think that Goodnight's name is Batman inspired. Because Goodnight had parents until Deadpool brutally murdered them in an alleyway. Oh, really? Yeah! Okay. So not a dark night, a good night. Well, I would say this is a pretty dark night. Oh, okay. Because uh, okay. that's dark. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Weasel has been pulling the strings for Mr. Goodnight and providing everything. Uh, Weasel's got a pretty big bone to pick. If you don't know, um, the Deadpool movies left a character out named Weasel who used to hang out at that bar, who was actually one of Deadpool's good friends. And I think that uh, they sort of combined him into the character, the other... Uh, what was his name? I can't remember his name. And I know it from, from other Deadpool comics, too. Anyways, um, so they sort of kind of combined the characters in the story and stuff like that. But anyways, so Weasel eventually... Um, Deadpool and Weasel get it ends for quite a bit. Quite, quite, quite a long time, I think. Um, and this is sort of... He, they're still fighting. It's pretty much it. So it's... It was a good read. It was funny. I laughed out loud maybe a couple times. Um, there's not a lot of, that happens. It's a big fight. It's sort of a little anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. However, if you love action and you love Deadpool, there's plenty of one-liners. You know what you're getting into with this. It was a pretty good read. Uh, I, I would say as a Marvel fan, uh, well, as a DC fan, I had a good time with this Marvel book. Uh, if you're a Marvel fan, you will have a good time with this book. If you don't know what's going on, I think you'd still have a good time. It's not terribly confusing. It's like mostly action and one-liners. So go pick this up. It's a good read. Next is Spider Gwen Ghost Spider, and I have been totally interested in why her symbiote spider suit keeps like taking off and doing its own thing. And uh, none of that is explained again. <laughs> but let me tell you, it's not it's not bad yet. I don't mind the slow burn. I think the slow burn's pretty good. But they keep emphasizing that that suit is a symbiote. And at one point in this, I kind of saw Gwenum for a second there. So, Ooh. oh, yeah, okay. things are getting wild. Okay. I have to wonder if something isn't coming out, if the, the suit isn't affecting her in some way. Maybe. Ooh. So, uh, anyways, um, 
I ha I'm having a really good time with Spider Gwen Ghost Spider. I think the slow burn that they're doing with the story is wholly applic applicable. It's pretty good. Um, granted, uh, not a lot of the plot was revealed in this. Still a really good read, though. Go pick it up. Uh, next is. Ooh, God, this cover. This cover. I didn't grab the main Punisher cover for the week because the Battlelines variant Punisher cover oh, is so good. Oh my god, look at that cover. It's amazing. So this is Punisher number 11. And if you don't know what's been going on, he's been fighting in Begalia, yep. Begalia, Begalia, which is the land of Hydra, mm -hmm. Hail Hydra. Yep. And so he's been taking them out and picking apart pretty much. He, he, he got captured by them, then picked apart their prison, then picked apart... Uh, the, the area around the prison, then has moved on to the capital, and he may have just destroyed most of this country. I don't know. You're going to have to go read this and find out. It is a damn good read. I, I love watching Frank Castle do what Frank Castle does. It's great. <laughs> it's great. So this is... I, I, can't, I can't talk more about it without spoiling it, but you know there's a lot of action. You know it's a Punisher book, and he was captured... He was imprisoned by uh, Hydra, and they tortured him, and he's a little pissed. Just just a scorch piss, Just slightly mad. And and it's so good. It's so good. So go pick it up. If you're a Punisher fan, you know who you are. Uh, if you're a DC fan and you like action, you can totally jump in on this and have a good time. Uh, I wouldn't say that the plot is terribly complex. All you have to know is that the Punisher is picking apart Hydra. GG. Yeah. Next is... Adventures with Super Sons. Uh, Adventures of the Super Sons. I got the name wrong. <laughs> Adventures of the Super The of the is really important. Um, and this is great. Still great. God, it's so good. So, if you don't know, the Super Sons storyline currently goes like this. Um, the Super Sons were in space. They got captured by a bunch of aliens that uh, idolized the Earth's villains. So they all became the Earth's villains. Because you can do that with alien space tech. That's wholly believable, right? Yeah, yeah. And so they've got their biggest enemy is Rex Luthor. Uh, Joker Jr. became their friend. Yeah, I saw uh, <laughs> there's a young Green Lantern involved. And there is a Jonah Hex robot. Yes, yes. That sums it up nicely. And now they're fighting the entire Injustice gang. That's what, uh, that's what Rex Luthor is calling his team the Injustice gang. And there is, oh man, Dooms, I think her name is Dooms Dana. What? Yeah, Dooms Dana. All right. Ah, it's so good. I have, I have such the best time with Super Sons, which is weird because this doesn't fly off our shelves. What? Why are you guys not reading this? It's a fun comic. It's so much fun. Come pick this up. Um, I will tell you they are ten issues deep, which is a problem for some people. And yet, trust me, you can jump in on this and still have a really good time. Believe me. Go pick it up. Next is a book you should be reading if you're a DC fan. If you're not reading, I'll have to ask what's wrong with you because this is Young Justice, and the Young Justice right now is so good. So uh, what do we know? They they went to Gemworld because Gemworld tried to invade Earth, yeah. um, and the Gemworld character is Amethyst. I got informed by one of our regulars that Amethyst is not a new character. She's actually a pretty old character. She's had a an, uh, an appearance way back when. And I looked it up, and she did look really dated. So I, I didn't recognize the character at all, but I did want to know more. And now there's more backstory to her, so I can go look that up later. But Amethyst controls one of the houses of Gemworld. The big bad of Gemworld is the main controlling house called Opal. Opal uh, is, well, he has imprisoned them and is going to move against them because they've been gathering their forces. Ginny Hex is in play. I, I love Ginny Hex. She, she just basically shoots everything without asking questions. Drives her truck into things. I love Ginny Hex. Ginny Hex is a great character. Um, Connor Kent is back. Yay. Connor Kent is back. He has a family. His child's name is Martha. Oh, oh it's Martha. Yeah, that movie ruined that for me. Oh, it did? <laughs> I'm sorry. I yeah. love that name. I thought that was really sweet. Yeah, um, that's a nice movie. Yep. We've got Tim Drake is in play, and oh, I gotta tell you, if you pick this up, you may get some, uh, uh, a sort of, uh, I guess a, I don't want to say a love scene, but a bonding scene, and some love, um, between Spoiler and Tim Drake, and it's so good to see, 
I, I love Stephanie Brown and Tim, Tim Drake scenes. They're, they're some of my favorite stuff in DC. And this is no different. And if you can't tell, um, well, you, you can't tell from this cover, so maybe I shouldn't reveal it. But there is a big magic user in play in this comic. Um, when I mention magic users and female, if you're a DC fan, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, if you don't, well, maybe work the problem backwards and you might figure it out. Backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Last book of the week, and it's it's a doozy. It's Hillbilly, Red-Eyed Witchery from Beyond. Ooh. So that that's a weird way to word something. Um, anyway, so this is a Hillbilly book. Uh, if you haven't been following Hillbilly, Hillbilly is pretty much the best thing coming from Eric Powell these days. Uh, it's Eric Powell, writer of The Goon. He does, I think, the art and he does the art and the writing. He has had help on the art in this book. Um, however, it's a really, really beautiful, good story. Every one of these hillbilly stories are. It follows Rondo, the wandering guy with no eyes who cries permanent black tears. And uh, he wields the devil's cleaver. And that's all you need to know. These stories play out sort of like Usagi Ojimbo stories of a wandering samurai. But it's not a wandering samurai. It's a wandering dude in the Appalachian Mountains dealing with witches and stuff like that. It's a good read. They're all a good read. I recommend coming and picking up all the Hillbilly books that we have on our shelf. And this one will be in trade because this is the fourth book. We didn't even know they were running the series, did we? No. Yeah, we found it on the fourth book. That sucks. I'm sorry. Um, meanwhile, this book is great. I, I didn't know anything going into the story. Was not confused. Had a pretty good time. Go pick it up. And that wraps up all of our books for the week. We still haven't talked about our Joker trailer breakdown. I haven't commented on the Avengers yet, uh, the Avengers movie. My Avengers movie was ruined because I had somebody yelling in the theater the whole time. Every two minutes, this guy was yelling at the screen. And it wasn't like, you know, people cheering at the screen when something good happens. That still happened, and that doesn't bother me. It was um, this guy yelling, you know, get up. Oh, don't do that. Look out. It's like, dude, you're not at Rocky Horror. You need to dial that back. And, uh, yeah, so I, I, I didn't have the best time. I, I thought the movie was great. That, that, that ruined my movie for me. Uh, yeah. Whereas this week's Game of Thrones was awesome. <laughs> and I had such a good time. Although, I have the brightness turned up really bright on my computer. And I heard from other people that they said that the, the episode was too dark. But I, I didn't experience that. For once, my crappy eyes worked out in my favor. <laughs> <laughs> well, kudos to you on that, sir. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, we need to do a sort of Avengers discussion and a Joker trailer wrap-up, I think, sometime this week. We'll, we'll get to it, I promise. I know I promised that like a week ago, but we just haven't had time. Oh, oh, oh! And we're going to be doing a mini-con event here at the mall. Uh, should I talk about it? I can. I mean, should I talk about the date? Or is yeah, that not set in stone? It's, it's getting closer to getting set. Yeah, throw it out there. Okay, so the date, the current tentative date for a, a Green Machine... What are we calling it? Green Machine Fest? Newfest? Green Machine New Fest? The combination of New yeah. Green Machine New Fest. Okay, that's what we're calling it. Green Machine New Fest. Uh, we're going to have comic retailers from around the bay are going to be here. Um, we're going to have a brewery here, so there will be beverages for adults. Um, we're going to have, what else? Uh, cosplayers. There's going to be cosplayers. A, uh, uh, we're going to do contest. at least a podcast. So I'm going to try to work out two or three um, working out face painters and, and balloon guys. Future really? Yeah. Face painters and balloon guys. And then um, we're going to try to put together some panels and maybe do a live comic review, which we've never done. We've never done a live comic review. No. Well, well we've done live feeds, but yeah. not with an audience. Yeah. So, yeah. so that'll be oh, fun. Right. Uh, anyway, so we've got the whole Rasputin Records, I think, is, is where we've got it. Um, and we were told by the mall that if that's not big enough, we can take the whole bottom floor of J.C. Penney's. That's wild. Like, <laughs> I was like, whoa, okay. So that should be July 27th. Approximately. And we'll just, we'll still do something for our store anniversary, but that's sort of our store anniversary. So if we make it there, we pretty much made it to the year mark, and we survived. Hooray! Uh... But come buy some books, because <laughs> fingers crossed right now. It's looking dangerous. Come buy some books. Please. <laughs> Help us get to the Green Machine New Fest. Buy some pop. <laughs> buy some books. Buy some pop. All right. Let's 
Let's look at some, some winners. Chicken dinners. Some winners. 16. Oh, wow. One of the earlier guys. That's going to be Matthew Bias. Matt Bias. You want a poster. Matty Bias. 161. 161. Wait, that's another 16. That's good. Josh Cardona. Josh Cardona. You are in here all the time and you watch our stream, so you know. You know the routine. 90. Christian Halverson. Christian Halverson. Come get a free poster. And that that is our wrap-up from this week, I think. Uh, it was a good week for pop culture. Uh, this weekend, please come in for a free comic book day. We will have free comics. We would love to see your face. We would love to discuss comics with you. Come talk shop. Come quiz us. Come do trivia. Come uh, have whole discussions. Throw out your theories and ideas. Get on this with us. So uh, that's, that's it. We're going to do the dance. <laughs>